call to order the regular city council meeting for Monday, April 20th, 2015. Please rise for the invocation from Joe Garkovich of the First Christian Church. Remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Mighty God, we thank you for another day. We thank you for another opportunity to come here and do the work of city government. We pray your guidance and wisdom in all of our considerations this evening. And as always, all these prayers we send to you in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Call the roll, please. Mayor Greer. Here. Council Members Brown. Here. Extra. Here. Katchmar. Here. Bates. Here. Weed. Here. Shiraki. Here. And Frida. Here. We have a quorum. Next is approval of the minutes from the April 6, 2015 regular city council meeting and the April 8, 2015 general government committee meeting. Are there any corrections? <coughs> May I have a motion, please? Councilman Bates. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I make a recommendation. We approve the April 6, 2015 regular city council meeting and the April 8, uh, uh, 2015 uh, general government committee meeting. Second. Second, we call the roll, please. Councilmember Bates. Aye. Councilmember Ketchmar. Aye. Councilmember Ekstrom. Aye. Councilmember Brown. Aye. Councilmember Weed. Aye. Councilmember Shiraki. Aye. Councilmember Frieda. Aye. Approved by unanimous vote. Are there any council member announcements? Councilman Ekstrom. Thank you. Uh, we have a public works committee uh, this Wednesday, the 22nd, next door, 4 p.m. Any others? Uh, yes, there is a planning commission meeting tomorrow at 7 uh, here. 7 o'clock here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any others? Uh, council, uh, Councilman Brown. Surprised you there, didn't I? Uh, Operation Brown. Collaboration is on uh, Wednesday evening, 5 to 8, at the uh, Abbey Event Center. Uh, we encourage uh, everyone that uh, represents an organization, a not-for-profit, a, a business, even individuals that want to come together and, and work on a, a collaboration initiative. So we're having that uh, ideation-style meeting on Wednesday of this week, the 22nd. Are there any others? Well, I would like to... Uh Congratulate Canyon City's own seventh grader Jerrica Moore for winning the national hoop shoot contest over the weekend. Um, she she was uh, she uh, made 24 out of 25 free throws in Springfield, Massachusetts. Her picture and and trophy will be in the Basketball Hall of Fame, and she won a $60,000 college scholarship. Oh. <laughs> That would go a long way in my family. We only go to one semester and then we quit. So. <laughs> uh, let's see, 2015 Canyon City Music and Blossom Festival, Queen and Court. I thought it was quite a coincidence that I had all these beautiful women follow me into the, into the city hall this evening. That hasn't happened for about four years. Four. <laughs> it's all yours. <laughs> I'd like to thank you all for inviting us here today. I'm so excited to represent the Canyon City Music and Blossom Festival. I'm your 2015 Blossom Queen. Um, this was my third year competing in the Blossom Pageant. I was third runner up last year, and I'm queen this year. Um, this year we had 22 candidates compete, and we had a sold out show. Our theme this year was Celebrate because it was the 70th anniversary of the Canyon City Blossom Pageant. Um, we had 27 past Blossom Queens actually attend the show, and following the pageant on Sunday, we had a Queens brunch where all the Queens got to get together and kind of just talk about the sisterhood of all being Queens and hang out for a little bit. Um, and that was hosted by the Robinson Mansion and Carriage House. Uh, this year, the carnival will open on April 29th. It's a Wednesday, and it'll go till Sunday. Um, on family night is Thursday, and you can get four wristbands for $60. So you get a little bit of a deal there. And food night will be on Wednesday. And if you bring two cans, you can get $5 off your wristband. So a really nice deal. Um, during the parade, the court and I will be traveling down in the parade on a float that we're actually building. And at the end, we'll be seated in the royal canopy, which will be across from the Goodwill. You guys can all come down and say hello if you'd like. We'd love to see you there. 
Um, and I'm just really excited for this to be the 77th anniversary of the Kansas City Music and Blossom Festival. Um, I'd like to introduce my first attendant, Carissa Harlow. Hi everyone, thanks for inviting us here today. I'm excited to see all your faces. Um, this is my third year doing the Blossom Pageant. Uh, best experience of my life, taught me how to interview, taught me how to speak in front of people, and I'm so excited to be on the court this year. Um, I was sponsored by Bella Capelli and City Market, so a shout out to them. Um, this year we will again have many great food vendors throughout the weekend. Um, they'll be available on the Parade Rue on Saturday, and then Veterans Park and Centennial will help have all the food vendors throughout the weekend. Um, there's also going to be the 10th annual Blossom 5K and 5 Mile Run on Saturday, May 2nd. You can <coughs> learn how to sign up at um, the CC Blossom Festival website. Um, runners and walkers are encouraged to participate. It doesn't matter how you finish, just as long as we're just happy to see you there. Um, on Saturday night, there will be the Cluster Duck, and this year there are going to be lots of bands, and there's also going to be Megan Rugger from The Voice, so we're really excited to have her. She's going to be a little celebrity star, so go out and have some fun and enjoy the festival, and I'd like to introduce the second attendant, Caitlin Collins. Hello everyone, my name is Caitlin Collins, I'm the second attendant and I'm just really excited to get started um, with this year and I thank you for inviting us here today. Um, I want to thank my sponsors, um, NX Propane and also East West Harmony Wellness Center, a big thank you to them. Um, this is actually my first year doing the Blossom Pageant and it's been like one of the greatest experience, experiences that I've had. Um, I've gained so many friendships and confidence that I didn't think I'd be able to have and I'm definitely looking forward to doing it next year also, and so it's just been a really great experience. Um, this theme, the theme of this year's Blossom Parade is going to be Celebration of Generations, um, and this will be held on Saturday, May 2nd, and the pre-parade is gonna start at noon, and the parade will be beginning at one o'clock. Um, there will be floats, antique, antique vehicles, dancers, baton twirlers, and um, much more such as marching bands. Um, the parade entry form can be found on our website at ccblossomfestival.com. Um, if you're inter interested in volunteering at all, you can um, get more information after the meeting from us. Um, numerous bands will be competing this year, so it'll be a very exciting thing to go to. Um, we're gonna be um, having concert bands, jazz bands, and also 24 different marching bands. So it's gonna be really exciting. Um, this year's competition is going to prove to be really exciting as we listen and watch to a very talented musicians throughout our community. Um, the band competition will be held on Friday, May 2nd, and it will have students from C Kane City High School and also Florence High School, and that will be on Saturday, May 3rd. Um, these competitions are free to the public, so just feel free to like invite anyone you want, your family, your friends, and just go support um, the community and our band. Um, and also the awards for the band competition will be directly after the parade at 3 p.m. And that's going to be at Canyon City High School's Citizen Stadium. And again, this is free to the public, so just be sure to go and just have fun with everything. Um, I encourage all of you to go. It's a great community event, and it's just a great way for everyone to come together and have fun. And most importantly, this year is just to celebrate. So I just really look forward to seeing you all there. And now I will introduce our 2015 Miss Personality, Elise Green. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having us here today. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm Elise Green, your 2015 Miss Personality. Um, this is also my first year competing. My sponsors are All About You Hair Salon and AB Orthodontics. Um, it was a true pleasure and great opportunity to participate in the pageant. Um, it was definitely something that was very new to me and something that I'd never experienced before, um, but I'm certainly happy <coughs> I did it. Um, I gained so many new skills and memories and friendships, and it's something I'm very thankful for. As far as the Blossom Festival coming up, the craft fair will be located in Veterans Park, and it will be held from, on Saturday and Sunday. There will be many booths featuring handmade crafts, food, music, and so much more. It's a great activity for families and kids of all, kids of all ages to come and attend. Um, and also, if you are, have a Facebook page and you're logged in, um, you can go find the Blossom Festival Facebook page under Canyon City's Music and Blossom Festival, and you can go ahead and go give it a like. 
Um, and not only that, but some new events that are happening to the festival this year are each block on Main Street will have its own block party. So it'll be lots of food and music and different fun party atmosphere for everyone to join in and celebrate. Um, but overall, just we'd love to have you guys there. And it's an awesome activity for kids, parents, everyone of all ages to come and attend and come and have fun and most of all celebrate. Um, and thank you all for having us here today. Um, on behalf of all the girls and the court, we're really looking forward to the Blossom Festival this year and all the fun activities that are coming up. And it's been a real pleasure and we're really honored and thankful to represent our wonderful community. So thank you. <laughs> thank you for coming out this evening. And congratulations to all of you. Okay, next is the adoption of the agenda and the consent agenda. Doug, will you review the consent agenda, please? Uh, tonight, kind of a long one. Uh, first item is to authorize a temporary street closure. This was discussed at the April 8th General Government Committee, recommended at that time. This is for uh, street closures, and these are various streets on May the 2nd uh, from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. for the annual Blossom Festival Parade. So this is uh, typically what has been done in the downtown area as far as street closures go. Uh, next item is to authorize a temporary street closure. We discussed this at the April 8th General Government Committee. Uh, this is for the closure of Skyline Drive on June 5th from 5 a.m. to 4 p.m. for the Ride the Rockies event. And the events locally are sponsored uh, by the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, the next item, again, is another street closure, temporary street closure. Uh, we discussed this again at the April 8th General Government Committee. This is for uh, closure of Skyline Drive on May 24th from 5 a.m. to 10 a.m. for the Bloom Classic 10, uh, 5K event. Uh, and this one is being sponsored by Create Canyon City. Uh, next item is another temporary street closure. Uh, we reviewed and, and uh, recommended this at the April 8th General Government Committee. Uh, street closure uh, for the five and 600 blocks of Main Street. This would be on May the 15th from noon to midnight for the annual flashback uh, on Main Street event sponsored by the Fremont Community Foundation. So that would be very much like as has happened in the past as well. Next item is to declare 48 portable radios a surplus property. Uh, these were radios uh, used previously by our police department that have become obsolete for our purposes. They have since been replaced. Um, this was reviewed and recommended at the April 8th General Government Committee. Uh, the city's purchasing policy requires or, or allows these to be donated uh, to other governmental agencies, and we will uh, consider giving them to the Custer County Sheriff's Department, uh, who's expressed a need for them, or if that does not prove, uh, prove out, they would be disposed of through auction or other acceptable ways under our purchasing policy. Next item is to ratify the extension of bid 1814 to Norvell Construction. Uh, we discussed this on the originally on the September 2nd, 2014 Council, uh, which was originally awarded at that time. That bid was for an amount not to exceed $472,000 and $625. Uh, it was due uh, to some additional uh, work that was going to be required on the rafters of the, the 3.4 million gallon tank that some additional work was going to be required, as you may recall. Uh, the, Bob Hartsman presented that. The additional amount was going to be an additional $208,112 that would be necessary to complete that work, as you may recall, due to the, to the corrosion and things going on inside of that tank. Uh, this additional amount would mean that the total award would not exceed $680,737.68. Uh, this item was discussed in some detail at the uh, April 8th General Government Committee. It was recommended uh, to the council at that time. Next item is to authorize the mayor's signature on a memorandum of understanding with the Bureau of Land Management. This MOU would allow the staff uh, at the museum to manage and provide professional care for the federally owned archeological collections that the BLM has in this area. The MOU is gonna be necessary for the BLM to acquire federal funding uh, for catalog, 
<clears throat> excuse me, cataloging and curating services of the artifacts, and hopefully some of that, that funding would come forward to the, uh, to the uh, museum staff to be able to hire the curator for that purpose. <clears throat> Next item is to authorize mayor's signature on a funding agreement. Uh, this would be for the Fremont Center for the Arts. This was discussed at the March 18th Public Works Committee. Uh, this contract would provide that the city will pay compensation the amount not to exceed $20,000 for specific services uh, to be offered to the community by the Arts Center. Uh, in effect, that this would be a payment of $2,000 a month. This would be retroactive to March through December of this year, so a total not to exceed $20,000. Next item is to authorize <clears throat> Mayor's signature to, construct, uh, to a construction and maintenance agreement with the Oil Creek Ditch Company. Uh, this agreement will provide for the installation of a 48-inch concrete pipe within the main channel and reconstruction of the head gates and bulkhead within or adjacent to that channel. Uh, this is near East Main Street and Steinmeier Avenue. This project is coming in advance of the CDOT Highway 50 Dozier improvements and would help to, to facilitate uh, that improvement. Next item is to authorize Mayor's signature on a software subscription agreement with Information Technologies, Inc., or otherwise known as ITI, in the amount not to exceed $24,327 per year. This agreement provides for software training and support for the police department's record management system, uh, which is part of something that we will need to do as, as, uh, as we undertake the, uh, the new uh, communication center. Uh, city Council would consider this agreement as substantially drafted by the city attorney. Uh, we will include a non-appropriations clause in this agreement, a typical uh, Tabor language that if we did not fund this in a given year, it, we would not be responsible for the additional cost. Uh, the additional cost would not exceed, uh, again, as I said, $24,327. Now, as you'll notice in the agreement, this is for a three-year agreement. And we'd also point out that the first year of this agreement, uh, the cost is $24,327 cost would be paid by CRCA with the uh, grant funds that it has received from the state and that this agreement, what it will do for us will be to lock in this price over the next three year period. So uh, we'll be making, making sure that that's uh, the cost that we're gonna be providing or be paying uh, going forward for the next three years, two years of which will be our payment in the future. Bid number 17 of 15 uh, is for tree and stump removal for the Parks Department to Front Range Arborist of Colorado Springs, Colorado, an amount not to exceed $34,000, recommended at the April 8th General Government Committee, and this will be to remove up to 32 uh, dead or dying trees and stumps within the city. Uh, the two bids were received. Uh, this bidder was actually the second lowest bid received. The lowest bidder was unable to fill some requirements uh, related to contractual obligations and therefore withdrew his bid. Uh, these funds are accounted for in the 2015 budget. Uh, bid number 18 of 15 for 14,000 pounds of sodium silica fluoride for the water department to Harcross Chemicals of Golden, Colorado in the amount of $9,100. This was reviewed and recommended at the April 8th General Government Committee for the annual purchase of this material. Uh, it's used at the water treatment plant for the treatment uh, of our water supply for our community. Uh, this was the sole bidder for th uh, the three that were uh, solicited, uh, and the funds are budgeted in the 2015 budget. Number 19 of 15, uh, bid number 19, uh, for 40,000 pounds of sodium chloride for the water department to Evaqua Water Technologies of Sarasota, Florida and the amount of $27,400. Uh, again, we reviewed this at the April 8th General Government Committee, and this is for the purchase of the sodium chloride material that's used at our treatment plant for the treatment of our water supply. Two bids were received from the three that were solicited, and this particular bidder was the low bid. Again, these funds are accounted for in the 2015 budget. Bid number 22 of 15 for 70,000 pounds of crack sealing material with the installation of that material for the streets department to Superior Asphalt of Magna, Utah, an amount not to exceed $112,140. Uh, 
uh, which number includes a 5% contingency. This would be for the purchase of sealing material for various street uh, chip sealing projects in the community. These projects are all part of our 2015 street paving project list that is reviewed periodically with the council. Uh, two bids were received from the six that were solicited, solicited and the superior was the low bid. And again, the funds for this item are accounted for in the 2015 budget. Number, bid number 23 of 15, 41,000 gallons of chip seal oil for the streets division for Suncor Energy of Denver, Colorado, an amount not to exceed $94,279.50, again with a 5% contingency for the purchase of chip sealing material, again to, to be applied to our various streets. Um, this again is part of our overall 2015 paving uh, project list. This was the sole bid received from the two that were solicited, and again, the funds are accounted for in our 15 budget. Uh, item number 24, uh, 15, this is bid number 24, 100, or uh, 100, <laughs> I get it, 1,600 tons of rock chips for uh, Rocky Mountain materials, and a Rocky Mountain of that number would be providing 14, uh, uh, 1,400 tons, Colorado Springs uh, in the amount of $30,800, and EWS Steel Aggregate, 200 tons of the total, and their Colorado Springs company in the amount of $6,600 for a combined award of $37,400. And again, that includes a 5% contingency. So the total uh, award here would not exceed $39,270. Again, this is for the purchase of, of, uh, of sealing materials for our various uh, street projects that are included in our, in our 2015 uh, paving project list. This was the sole bidder from the six that were received and the funds are again accounted for in our 2015 budget. And then lastly, our list of bills for the last two week period. Any additions or corrections, uh, Councillor? Mayor, if I, if I may add on a little bit of information concerning the uh, software subscription agreement, which we're asking you to approve substantially as drafted, I handed out before the meeting to all council members uh, part of the quote given to uh, the city by uh, ITI, Information Technologies, Inc. You will notice, and I've marked it in uh, orange, there are a set of one-time costs, which are actually costs that, are, that will be incurred for the benefit of the uh, Canyon City Police Department and the conversion of its data from the system it has used for years to the new system that the, the parties to CRCA agreed to adopt. We may add a provision to the contract that uh, draft that you are seeing tonight, uh, which provides that the city incurs uh, the obligation with respect to these one-time costs only if, uh, well, the, the, the city incurs no obligation with respect to these costs, but will, be get, will, but will receive the benefit of the services provided for upon the payment of an invoice by CRCA, which is what they need uh, to uh, uh, glom on to the uh, DOLA grant funds that uh, are available to cover this cost. We also did pin down that the first year of the software subscription cost will be paid by CRCA and, and thus we are relieved of that obligation for year one. In years two and three and all years thereafter that we use the ITI software, which is probably going to be a long-term event. Uh, will be responsible for the the uh, the software use cost of <coughs> twenty four three twenty seven for the years two and three, and probably the the amount goes up at least incrementally thereafter. So I wanted to clarify that uh, you might see a larger number in the finished contract, but it will all be keyed to payments by CRCA before the city incurs any obligation to ITI and ITI incurs any obligation to us. But the reason we bring this in less than totally complete uh, form tonight is we don't want to lose another uh, two weeks in getting this process going. The, the target date for opening the communications center now appears to be July 1 of this year and that appears to be a real date. 
so we don't want to do anything that would uh, slow the process. Thank you, John. Lisa, did you have something you wanted to comment on? Other Lisa. June 19th, and uh, we have the June 5th. It's been a typo on mine. We'll get the agenda corrected. So do we need to uh, amend that? <laughs> Why do you want to make a motion to amend that? Why don't you do that now? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion that we amend the agenda, the consent agenda, item number B, or letter B, to uh, June 19th. Second. Second. Call the roll, please. Councilmember Ekstrom? Aye. Councilmember Frieda? Aye. Councilmember Shiraki? Aye. Councilmember Weed? Aye. Councilmember Bates? Aye. Councilmember Ketchmar? Aye. Councilmember Brown? Aye. Thank you, Lisa. So that was a good catch. <clears throat> All right, so now um, now, back. We need, now we need a motion to approve the agenda. Oh, now we'll go back to the motion to <laughs> adopt the agenda and the consent agenda. Councilman Ekstrom. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that we adopt the agenda and consent agenda. As amended? As amended. Second. Second, Second from Councilwoman Frieda. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Councilmember Ekstrom. Aye. Councilmember Frieda. Aye. Councilmember Brown. Aye. Councilmember Ketchmar. Aye. Councilmember Bates? Aye. Councilmember Weed? Aye. Councilmember Shiraki? Aye. Approved by unanimous vote. Next is the administrator's report. A uh, couple items. Um, the first item is a report on the sales tax revenues. You all received a, a copy of that report in your packet. And just for uh, the public's information, the sales tax revenues have been going up in recent months, which is good news. Uh, they were up again in March uh, from 423,000 um, in March of 2014 to 476,000 in March of this year. So that's a 12.5% increase. That's good news. And if you take a look at the entire first quarter of this year compared to last year, uh, we're up seven, just over 7%, 7.2% 7 uh, for the first quarter. So everything seems to be, in that regard, going in a, in a very positive direction, and hopefully it will continue. Next item I would just wanted to give uh, the council an update on is kind of the, the building activity in the community uh, for the first quarter of the year, uh, again, compared to the first quarter of last year, and uh, provided all the numbers in the council's packet. And you'll notice that uh, the building activity uh, has been uh, fairly favorable for the first quarter of this year compared to last year. While the number of permits dropped slightly in the first quarter of this year, the valuation of the work increased significantly in the first quarter of this year. We've had uh, two significant commercial projects that are getting started now, and uh, that has certainly helped. Uh, one of the things that I thought was interesting is that even when you look at the, the fee waivers, you remember the council has put together an economic uh, incentive program that will waive certain fees and uh, and water tap fees for new construction. In spite of the the fees that have been waived for these projects, uh, our our building permit fees have been uh, also up for the first quarter of this year. So, all in all, that's that's uh, a good information. I think that uh, hopefully we can kind of continue to see that trend going forward. And just kind of for the public's information that might be watching on TV. The number of permits uh, in 2014 for the first quarter were 87. This year it was 75, so again, as I said, down slightly. The total valuation in 2014 for the first quarter was about just over 1.2 million. For this year, it was just over 3.6 million. Uh, our permit fees collected in 2014 were just over uh, 12,000, just, and, and in 2015, we're about uh, uh, 21,500 in round number. So again, even though we had waived some of those permit fees, our revenue uh, is up uh, slightly. Uh, the use tax, you'll see the use tax is down, but hopefully, again, with the, the way we've done this, in, this incentive program, we'll be collecting some of that use tax uh, over time as, as those projects go forward. So 
so far some, some good information and good things happening and hopefully those trends will, will continue as we go forward. The last item on my report is we were going to get a presentation tonight for an event coming up here in town, the Colorado Mission of Mercy. And we have John Kearney and Alex Van Acker who are here tonight. I don't know which one of them is going to do the talking, but we'll let them figure that out. And Hello, Council. My name. Huh? You want to speak? I'll talk. That's fine. Right go ahead. And Whichever you together. prefer. My name is John Kearney. This is Alex Van Acker, and we're a couple of local dentists here in Fremont County. First off, I want to thank the Council for this opportunity to prevent, present information to you about a big event coming to Canyon City. Uh, as Doug said, COMOM, Colorado Mission of Mercy. It's going to be held at Harrison School on August 14th and 15th. John said, my name is Alex Van Acker, and uh, I, I'm a dentist in Penrose, Colorado. I've been there for 30 years. And uh, I've been involved with Colorado Mission of Mercy for five years. And uh, it's kind of the icing on the cake for my career and my involvement with them. And uh, like John said, the, uh, the project is in August. And uh, to give you a, an idea of the scope and the size of what we're doing, uh, if you have an extra five minutes, I, I know you're very busy tonight, but if you watch the video, you'll get an idea of what we're doing, and then we can give you some more general ideas about what we're doing, and then if you have any questions. We're here at the Colorado Mission of Mercy. It's free dental care, no questions asked. First come, first serve for people that have often been putting off their care in order to take care of their children. With the economic situation that we're dealing with, just putting food on the table, clothing on their kids, transportation to the job, or several jobs, there's no money left for dentistry. So they just suffer. Well, this is an opportunity to remove the suffering that these people have been with for years. That's what the Colorado Mission of Mercy is all about. We don't make enough money to buy health insurance for our family, but we make too much money to get help with the state. My husband and I both work and we both, you know, pay bills and food and rent. So no money left to do anything else. I guess self-esteem is the biggest problem for me and work. I think it'll help both a great deal. You know, when you ain't got the front teeth that are all broken and whatnot, people tend to, whether they mean to or not, you know, kind of shy away or, or what have you, because they think that you're, I don't know, maybe dirty or just poor. You know, and there ain't nothing wrong with being either one, just it was our turn to get fixed. So I'm, I'm absolutely thankful that this place was here today. He's one of the, he's the best doctor I've ever had work on my mouth, ever. I have to honestly say that. It was, it was in and done and finished like that. by myself working two jobs and she graduated CSU three years ago and works in Denver now. Sometimes it feels like all you do is work and you never you never get any benefit from it just to pay your bills because there's nothing left over and I wasn't always in this position but things happen and I gave one of the dentists this morning when he told me he would they would go ahead and fix my teeth I gave him a hug and started crying you know it's just like the fact that you guys would just do this, thank you so much. I'm overwhelmed and overjoyed. 
The problem is that these people have care that needs to be met, but they don't have a dentist to go to, either because of lack of income or lack of knowledge about why they should go to the dentist. And that's part of what we do today. We're not only taking care of the problems, but we're trying to educate them as to how they can try and prevent those problems from coming back again. What is overwhelming for me is that we have all of these dentists and dental students and all these professionals that say, you know what, we're going to try to make a difference and help as many people as we can help today. We work for hugs, and we get a lot of hugs. There's a hug quotient that we have here, and it's very high. There's a lot of people that really appreciate and understand what we're doing for them. Thank you, Alex. And uh, I want to review some of these things about Call Mom. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this is the, it's being held at Harrison School on August 14th and 15th. This is actually the ninth annual event, and this is held in varying communities throughout the state, uh, starting in 2007 in Alamosa. And the committee targets areas of need, so it is really huge for the people. Uh, as you saw in the video, about 200 dentists with 1,000 volunteers. And uh, you don't necessarily have to be a medical or dental personnel to volunteer for this event. And so it is going to be open to volunteers for quite a number of different jobs involved. Uh, we have local electricians and plumbers involved in helping with the setup and the breakdown and making sure things run smoothly. And there are just volunteers needed to help people with their medical histories, to give them directions about the facility. And uh, 1,500 patients, uh, based on the, the past eight, an average of a million dollars of dental care is done for free. I was asked at another presentation about people that are on Medicaid, if they can go to this, and they certainly can uh, because even though many people have become eligible for Medicaid in the past year, there are not enough providers uh, because of the way the system is and the need to provide for all of their care. And so this is basically open to everyone on a first come and first serve basis. And we are hopeful that um, people that really are not needy will stand aside and let people who are needy get the care. Now, there is no reimbursement, I was asked at this uh, other presentation, about state reimbursing for Medicaid patients, and there is no system to do that. Comom does not have the administration, and I think it probably also might affect their 5013C status as well. So this is a total charity event. Um, we are always in need of donations, and so any... Uh, people or organizations that um, are interested in this. There's going to be future information coming out. We're in the process of getting hotlines established for both volunteers and patients and general information. Alex and I will be going to the radio station and to the newspaper uh, in the future to give more information on this as it approaches. Last year, I've been asked, uh, what, what does Comom cost? Last year, the expenditure was $178,000. And uh, they get all this money through donations. Another thing that someone might ask is, what is uh, the money needed for? Well, one of the large expenses is for the transport and use of portable dental chairs and dental equipment, and it is brought to various, Com or not just Comon, they have other names in other states, but, but uh, dental charity missions in other states um, by the American Dentist Clinic Foundation. And this is out of Wichita, Kansas. And I have been told that it will be about $40,000 for these people to transport the necessary dental chairs and equipment 
to host this event in Canyon City this year. Um, there are many other things needed, portable toilets, bottles of water, food, um, electrical plumbing supplies, generators, fuel, compressors, PVC pipe, materials for draping, floor covering, and it just seems to go on and on. And as Alex mentioned earlier, both of us have worked this event in the past, which is how the site chairmanship found its way to us. I told the director that I was having surgery that week. She said two words, reschedule it. <laughs> no, uh, we're happy to do this. This is a huge thing. And uh, we have worked the dental side of it, as I said, but uh, we're learning on the run about the logistical side. A very big event indeed. And that's about all I have to say. Do you have anything else? But we'd be happy to have any of you volunteers. One last thing, our next volunteer meeting. Uh, our volunteer meetings are held at Harrison School, the site of the event. The next one will be on Tuesday, April 28th at 6 p.m. And there'll be a meeting every month going forward. And there'll be more information on that as well through our interviews and the hotlines. Um, there will be... Uh you know, we'll keep in constant contact with the city council because we'll have traffic issues, parking issues, and um, other things. But uh, this is really um, a chance for Canyon City to shine, to show them our volunteer spirit and our uh, generosity to people less fortunate. And so uh, th uh, the feeling you get when you go there is tremendous. I've watched that, vi that uh, video probably 30 times and I still kind of tear up every time I watch it because uh, it's a tremendous thing. Uh, we bring in everything. We are totally self-contained with the plumbing, the HVAC, um, electrical, um, everything. And it's really amazing that we can get this entire clinic. Harrison School has let us take over the entire school. So the gym, if you can imagine having the double gym lined with chairs and full of patients and people. And it's really just an amazing thing that we put that all together in one day. And then the dentists come in at five in the morning and they start seeing patients at 6.30 or seven and they just bust a hump all day long till seven at night. <coughs> and, uh, and then they do it again on Saturday. And it's really amazing, uh, the line of people is uh, a quarter of a mile long of people waiting to get in. So it's an amazing thing. It's an amazing opportunity for Canyon City. And uh, I think that we gave you the letter from uh, uh, Dr. Chuck and Brush, and he can give you some ideas about the benefits to the community. We're going to bring in thousands of volunteers, one to 2,000 volunteers. And uh, so thank you for listening to us. And uh, like I said, we'll keep in contact and let you know how things are going. Are there any questions? Any questions from the council? I'm just going to make some comments. Actually, I, I'm, I'm impressed every time I hear this presentation. This is the third time uh, I've heard John talk about this. And it, it really is almost more than you can comprehend to picture a room with 200 dental setups in it, fully occupied, more than 1,000 people making this thing happen. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. And any of you who are interested to uh, see how you can volunteer, we would welcome you, or any of your friends, neighbors, colleagues, etc. I would just like to commend what you're doing too, and I do plan to volunteer. Did, did you say the 28th? Yeah, April 28th April at Harrison 28th. School, okay. 6 o'clock. Very good. That's our next volunteer meeting. We'll teach how to pull teeth. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I'm surprised what you can learn. <laughs> well, thank you for what you're doing. It sounds wonderful. Thank you. Okay, next on our agenda is the impound agreement with the Humane Society. May I have a report, Doug? Yeah, we have a, as you know, we've had a, 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 a agreement with the uh, Humane Society of Fremont County for some time. Uh, our most recent agreement uh, a year ago 
uh, was a $30,000 agreement. That's typically what we've been paying for the services uh, for animal uh, uh, control services for the community. Uh, you may recall that in our, our last go around, there were some issues that, uh, that were happening at the uh, Humane Society. We heard from a number of people in our community. Uh, they attended various meetings here and in our work sessions next door. Um, over time, I think a lot of those things were worked out. There's a new administrator, uh, Doug Ray. He's doing, from everything I hear and everything I can gather, he's doing just exactly you know, what the community was hoping would happen. Uh, the uh, situation out there has turned around. You may recall in our previous agreement, we had written provisions into that agreement uh, that would allow for the city to do inspections uh, out at the Humane Society. Those uh, proved out certain things, and we all heard about those reports uh, over time. And so we feel very comfortable that uh, things are going in a very positive direction. Uh, Doug was going to be here tonight and unfortunately was not going to be available, uh, but we're hoping that he will come back at a future meeting and kind of give us an update on what's happening. And so I think we can look forward to that report in a very positive way. But this agreement, uh, as you probably had a chance to read, is really kind of a continuation of past agreements with a couple things uh, changed. Number one, uh, this agreement uh, is on a month-to-month -month basis and it would, would continue uh, you know, beyond the, this year. Uh, as long as it's appropriate with the city council, uh, you can give a at least a seven day notice or they could to terminate the agreement if you so choose to do that. Um, and hopefully that would not have to happen. This agreement establishes a continuation of the $30,000 a year payment. Um, my guess is that someday in the future we'll probably hear from them on some kind of an increase to that. It's been that number now for a while and I think that their, their services or the cost of their services, as I've been hearing, maybe uh, they're experiencing increases. So we could hear that in the future. But this agreement uh, would uh, continue things on. It, one thing that it does do is it eliminates the provision for the on-site inspections. Uh, hopefully we've gone past that, the need for that, and it's no longer in this agreement. But again, if you decide or they decide uh, that you want to terminate the agreement with a seven, at least a seven day notice someday in the future, you could do that. So we're asking tonight that the city council uh, approve this agreement. Now this would be a retroactive agreement so we can get them caught up from the beginning of the year. And then after that, uh, it would be the $2,500 a month. And then they bill us as they typically have where every month they give us a, an indication of the services that they provided, how many dogs they've taken in, how many cats they've taken in, so on and so forth. Um, so with that, we're asking the council to consider approval of this agreement. Okay. Do we have any questions from the council? <clears throat> Comments from the audience? Please, you got to step up to the mic, unfortunately. Please state your name and address. My name is Vita Overy. I live at 740 Yarborough here in town. Um, I was one of the original volunteers that brought some problems to air, and we had a Facebook page that was called Stop the Humane Society of Fremont County. It now states support the Humane Society Society of Fremont County. So I speak for most, if not all, of the former volunteers and current volunteers in, uh, first of all, saying thank you for listening to our concerns and taking them seriously. Um, had that not happened, I think we'd be in the same position we were in for 20 years. So I would just thank everybody on the council and Mr. Mayor, and I we all wholeheartedly support Doug Ray and what he's doing there. They have a 99% save rate since September when he came on board, and that's pretty much unheard of. And their expenses are going up because they're holding more dogs and transporting more to um, rescues in Denver, and they are treating dogs that before didn't receive any treatment. So the expenses do go up. So I just wanted to say thank you for um, hearing us out and getting us through this. Thank you. May I have a motion, please? Councilman Bates. 
Yeah, Mr. Mayor, make a recommendation. We approve the uh, uh, agreement with the Humane uh, Society of Fremont County for the amount of $30,000. Second. Second from Councilman Weed. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Councilmember Bates. Aye. Councilmember Weed. Aye. Councilmember Frieda. Aye. Councilmember Ketchmar. Aye. Councilmember Brown. Aye. Councilmember Shiraki. Aye. Councilmember Ekstrom. Aye. Approved by unanimous vote. Last on the agenda, citizens request to speak to City Council. We have received no written request to speak to Council on an item that's not already on the agenda. We are adjourned. <laughs>